Oh, look at this. Oh my God. The only difference between this and this is temperature. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm your host, Chris Jones. It is a very chilly day here in North Florida. Um, however, I do sympathize with some of you in other parts of the country. I mean, seeing negative 30 degree wind chills. I mean, like football games are being canceled. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cold everywhere. Um, but today is a really important video. This is sort of my refresher course on how to pour with proper temperatures to get layering and bonding in a soft plastic lure. That is still the number one question that I see out in the bait making universe and the number one question sent to me personally through social media DMs, YouTube, uh, YouTube comments, and people just asking questions on some of my social media posts. Um, you know, hey, like, how do I get the tops to fill out flat? How do I get the tops to fill in, you know, cleanly? How do I get my layers to bond? How do I get rid of cold cracks? We're gonna go through all that today. We're gonna demonstrate the right way to do it and then a wrong way to do it and then show you what that difference is so that you can see what really the outcomes are between doing it the, the right way or the wrong way, you know, one of the two ways. Um, so yeah, we definitely don't want cold cracks. We want good bonding, bonding of the layers so that we have a structural sound bait, okay? Because the whole idea is to make a bait that works, that catches a fish, and you can't do that with cold cracks if your bait's gonna peel apart. So um, like I said, we did a video on this about two years ago. Here comes the refresher, let's get into it. All right, so let's get straight into it. Anybody that is hand pouring, not injecting, but hand pouring aluminum molds whether it is a two-piece aluminum mold like this, right? So what I mean by two-piece is the mold is two halves, okay, right? So you can see that we're gonna pour a shad pattern. We have already poured in the little black kill dot there, okay? So this is a two-piece mold or a one-piece open cavity mold like this six-inch bot worm, okay? So these are both uh, Angling AI molds right there. Check them out, of course, if you're uh, looking for some good bait molds. Um, but the key is temperature, okay? You need to preheat the molds, and that's what we're doing here, right? You can see that I have um, one of the fishing all out bait makers hot plates, and you can see I've got it set to a target temperature of 270 degrees, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But whether you're doing fancy swim baits or something more simple, just like a worm cavity, you have to have temperature. The only way that those cavities are filled in so clean and nice like that is because I poured into a preheated mold on the hot plate, okay? So, what you want to achieve is a preheated temperature on your molds to where either spit, I'm not kidding, or water, and don't have water around around your bait making, okay? Because hot liquid plastic and water do not mix. It's like water and grease. However, you want the surface of the molds to boil. I always just kind of spit on them. I mean, you know, that sounds a little grotesque, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. This is bait making, not home improvement. So what you want to achieve is a temperature to where the top surface of the molds reach boiling temperature, which is 212 degrees. So if I'm setting my target temperature here to 270, you might think, well, hey, Chris, that, that seems like a little bit of overkill when you only need to reach boiling temperature. Well, what happens is, and this goes for the expensive hot plate or a cheap cooking griddle from, from Walmart, you have a heating element, okay, in the plate Heat is lost between that transfer, and heat is lost between the transfer of the actual mold itself, okay? So the bottom of the mold is receiving heat more directly from the plate. A lot of that heat is being lost, okay? So I need to set a temperature that is hot enough to get the top of the mold to boiling temperature. That way I know that the rest of the mold, the rest of this entire block, the whole mold cavity is hot enough that my plastic is going to pour in, my layers are gonna flatten out, um, my laminate veins are gonna flow smoothly and they're gonna fill in thermally and more importantly, they're going to 
bond, okay? When you pour into a cold mold, and when I say a cold mold, I don't mean room temperature like these molds over here that are not preheated. I mean a mold that is not up to proper pouring temperature. You're going to get problems. You're gonna get delamination, cold cracks. And even if you don't, you're not gonna get that smooth thermal blending of color and blending of your layers, okay? Because what, what we're trying to achieve here is not only a pretty pattern, a good blending of color, but most importantly, a structurally functional bait that will not split. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually making baits that are for a paying customer, okay? These are baits that um, a customer has paid me for and done like an official order of swim baits with me. Um, thanks to everyone who, who does that and supports me and shows interest in my work. Um, however, as such, I need to do a good job on these, okay? So we're gonna demonstrate what I think and what I have found to be my best process to pour the best bait that I can in terms of temperature. Now, color is subjective. I'm gonna show you the color build. It's a brand new shad pattern that I've introduced in the last two months, maybe. Um, I call it North Georgia Threadfin. It's a very difficult color for me to achieve. So I'm gonna show you that color build, and then I'm gonna show you the pour. And then after that, I'm gonna do something that really hurts my soul. I'm gonna not preheat the molds properly, and we're gonna try to do the same pour again, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not gonna turn out good. It's gonna be cracked and deal, oh, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt my soul, but I wanna show you guys what happens when, when proper temperature is not achieved. All right, so we have our uh, Dead On Plastics swim bait blend here cooked up. And uh, we're just gonna get that bottom layer stirred up. You can see the bottom is still a little bit milky. The bottom of your cup of plastic is always the last part of the cup to get all the way cooked. So you really, really gotta stir things in to make sure that everything is cooked. However, uh, we can go ahead and add the belly color. The belly color is the simple part. It is just white pearl, okay? But not a lot of white pearl. We want this thing to be pretty see-through at the end of the day. All right, here we go. All right, so as you can see, the spit is not boiling. We are not quite there. We need a few more minutes. Okay, so in the meantime, we're going to mix up this um, vein color, okay? And the vein is so beautiful. It is a gold highlight base, okay? but a lot of gold highlight, right? That's a lot, all right? Maybe a smidge more even, okay? Lots of gold highlight. Cut with some chartreuse. Give it a little bit of green and it brightens it slightly, okay? And then <clears throat> one drop of black. And I'm actually not trying to darken it by adding the black. I'm just trying to bring out the highlight effect, okay? So similar to a color shift, a hyper shift, and now a hollow shift, um, I'm just trying to make the effect of the powder pop, okay? And adding a drop of black will successfully do that. Yeah, look at that. All right, new spit test. Ooh, getting closer. It's bubbling a little bit, but we're not quite boiling. Okay, there it is right there. If you are not seeing that happen, you are not ready for your pour. Do not even start the belly color. Back in the day, I would actually start my belly a little bit colder and then bring the pour up to, t to boiling temperature by the time I topped off the tops. Now I kind of do things differently. I start the pour at full pouring temperature and end the pour at full pouring temperature. Say that five times fast. All right. I like to kind of start towards the tail of this mold, pour it up a little bit just to make sure that that little fin fills in, and then I'll bring it down to the head, and then I want to fill it to exactly the top of that hook slot insert. Not below it, not over it, but exactly to the top, just like that. That is perfect. Okay, all the bellies are in and they're looking good. 
And I want to show you all something if I can get a good angle on it in terms of what I mean by the temperature of the molds keeping the plastic workable. I'm going to blow on the plastic and see if you can see it move. I hope that came through. And that's what I mean. The plastic is still setting up. It's firm enough that I can pour the next layer. But as you can see, it has not hardened. This will still bond and blend beautifully. Okay, and now I can pour my vein. All right, so we're gonna show that like we've shown a lot on this channel, but let's do it again. All right, and in the G5 mold, I have to pay specific attention to how far I pour it up into the head. All right, so we're gonna stop the pour right there and we're gonna let the heat of the mold, oops, pull that plastic all the way up into that head cavity all the way up to the uh, eyeball insert so that's essentially how i'm doing that i'm letting temperature do the work full for me in a way to achieve that smooth gradient of color all right all the veins are in i went ahead and finished them up off camera uh, just pouring veins is is pretty difficult and um, i wanted to do them off camera since these are like baits for a paying customer so i didn't want to like chance messing them up just to get the uh, more footage so um, what's great however is i'm still not in a hurry okay my veins are set they are in place they are exactly where i want they are thermally bonded and blended with the belly color and they are still that kind of movable jelly too if i were to blow on them so now i can take my time over here right i've got my plastic cooking and I know that even if I don't top these off for another 20 minutes, I'm still getting the, the correct bond on my baits, okay? They're gonna come out silky smooth in terms of the layers, no cold crack, everything is gonna be as it should be. And I'm not rushed while doing it. Um, you know, could you, could you dial in this process more to where you get the molds hot and then you pour them quicker? Yeah, sure. I just don't find that I get the results that I want. I don't get that marriage of colors, and that's the blending part um, by trying to rush it and pour the molds a little bit colder, but a little bit faster. I'd rather get them to temp, do it right, take my time, not be rushed, and get the results that I want. All right, and for the top color, I kind of need to get a gray, okay? And I'm going to start with a couple of drops of black, which will give me a charcoal. One, two, three, four. All right, this is a full measuring cup. Sorry, guys, I keep kicking the camera tripod. This is a full measuring cup worth of plastic, okay? So four drops of black, as you can see, does go a pretty long way. All right, that is pretty charcoal. All right. Okay, so let's just drizzle some of that out. Yeah. So that's what it really looks like over there. As you can see, it's, it's, it's gray. However, I need it a little bit grayer and opaquer. So I'm actually gonna cut this with some white, okay? We are going true gray, not charcoal. All right, so we're using some white with this. And this is where I just have to kind of dial this in to taste each time. You know, I am still, I'm still learning this pattern. Yeah, that right there is looking pretty fly, actually. Maybe a smidge more white. I'm just going to drizzle some out and get it on the tip of my knife and just use fractions of a drop, okay? And then one thing that I did that really set it off was I actually added some color shift to it. This is the Dead Shift 24 karat. And we just want a little bit of that in that top color. The gold in this sort of complements the gold that's in the vein, okay? So you, if you remember, the vein was that, was that kind of golden highlight. So we just want a little bit of gold to sort of complement that. All right, now we're topping them off. So the way I like to top off the G5 mold, so I like to start in the center, bring it down into the tail, fill the tail all the way up, bring it back to the center and then leave it there okay and I just want to let the plastic flow slow and steady to fill that head in 
If you, if you fill that head in on the top color too fast, sometimes you can trap an air bubble up there in the nose. So we want to go extra slow. That's a uh, tip that uh, uh, Johnny Sweet gave me. We were both kind of chatting one day about the best way to fill in the mold, and he's like, well, here's what works for me. And uh, yeah, that's a great way to do it. So anyway, we're gonna fill these in, and uh, we gotta wait a while to show you the results, and then we'll do the really crappy pour. Okay, just got them all topped off less than 10 seconds ago. I filled in that last cavity, and now I'm cutting the plate off. You should never, also, <laughs> under any circumstance, have to let them cook right after you've topped them off if you have to let them cook you did the pour too cold okay literally the entire time since the first drop of plastic went into the belly these molds were done okay as soon as we finish off the the last one cut it off there's no more cook time required the layers are bonded they're blended everything's done because we preheated them properly all right, there's no guessing game on, yeah, I gotta let them cook for 15 minutes, or yeah, I topped them off and then over poured it, you know, to try to get a flat top. You know, those are all things that we've all been through trying to learn this hobby, and I can tell you from a lot of experience, those never lead to good, consistent results. Do it hot, preheated correctly the first time, you get good bonding, you get good blending, you get flat tops, and you get clean tops on those edges. That is the way to do it right there. Okay, we're back, and sorry about the laundry noise. Uh, everyone who watches this channel knows that I have a, uh, a history with the washing machine. Here we go, drum roll reveal, drum roll please. Okay, let's break her open. Yeah! There it is. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's zoom in and let's get close. Now, well, let's still try and focus. But yeah, look at how that gold vein, that gold highlight vein pops, but you can still see the chartreuse. Yep, beautiful. And most importantly, no cold cracks, okay? We have. <clears throat> A very very nice straight <clears throat> even laminate or even vein you can see the vein just fades oops just kind of fades into that into that um, tail section right and that is all thermal blending all right and of course sorry no cold cracks anywhere if we even look at it under glare if we look at that section where all the colors meet You'll see no fissures, no cracks in the surface. That is exactly how we want this bait to come out. Yep, and look at that top. Nice, flat, even top and clean edges. That is all because of temperature. That is not because I am able to pour out the contents of a cup any better than you. It is just simply knowing and managing temperature. Okay, so we went ahead and took uh, three baits out of the molds and we are basically going to do the pour again, okay? Um, using the leftover plastic from, uh, from, I guess, the good pour, okay? So it's gonna be the same exact color and the same exact mold, except only this time, we're going to do the pour before the molds are at full temperature. I think what happens a lot of times is people put molds on their uh, pancake griddles or their hot plates. They set, they set the temperature that they want and they're pouring the molds before they are truly ready. Okay, so we have made a good faith effort to preheat these molds. In fact, they are hot enough that my fingers really don't want none, okay? Um, <clears throat> we have done all the things that we know that we're supposed to do, you know? If we have made it this far to even purchase these molds, we know generally how they need to be poured. We've watched a few World's Worst Fishing videos, we've asked some questions in the forums, and now we've got our molds piping hot and we expect to get a good result, all right? So, we're just gonna pour them as 
any normal bait maker might, okay? And when I say normal, I just mean beginner who has not practiced hand pouring much. All right, so we're just gonna start up here in the head and just pour them down. All right. And see where that gets us, okay? Looking good, not bad. Not too bad. We're just gonna pour them enough to where it kind of gets into that little uh, fin there on the bottom. Yeah, we're gonna keep going just to the top of the hook slot. Exactly the, the same height, I guess, as the ones before. Okay, it's been 30 seconds and I know that because I uh, popped our vein color back in for 30 seconds. However, I feel like I'm doing really good because I've got my next color ready to go. It's, it's been less than a minute, right, since I poured those last ones. All right, so we're gonna get some plastic in and just kind of do the best that we can. Just gonna get our veins going. And for this example, I'm not gonna worry too much about where to stop them. Again, we're trying to pour this as if we were a beginner without a lot of temperature uh, practice, I guess. Okay, it has been 25 seconds now, and let's try to top one off, okay? That, uh, that vein is already completely set up. It is absolutely hard in, in just less than 30 seconds here. All right, so now we're gonna fill up this top, do the best job that we can here. Yep, all right, and so on. All right, so we actually uh, did a few things off camera. So right here we have what I would consider three tiers of pouring of the same exact pattern. So zoomed out here, you might think, hey, there's really not much difference in these. Um, so up top, on top, are the ones that we did earlier. We see really, really great blending of color, no cold cracks, a very, very straight, smooth laminate line. And uh, if we look closely, the way that the vein fades into the head, right? Really beautiful blend of color, okay? The vein stays consistent all the way to the eye. All right, now here are the ones that we just did on camera for y'all, trying to mess them up. And as you can see, not terrible. It, they came out better than I thought. Um, as you can see, however, if we look at it this way, if we look at our vein, our vein is kind of curved, right? And that's because of the belly color did not settle out as flat because it was poured into a colder mold. And you can see the vein really just nose dives down here towards the eye. It just, it doesn't stay consistent. So look at the vein on this one and then look at it on this one. Huge difference. And even though this one looks good from the outside in terms of no visible outer cold cracks, this one is structurally very, very flawed. And then off camera, I went ahead and poured one much, much colder. Still heated, but not by, not by very much. And as you can see, we have tons, oops, tons of visible cold cracks. The vein is an absolute nightmare. Um, and if you'll notice, pouring it at the right temperature, look at how much more the vein and the color pops as opposed to this, right? There is no change of color here. It's just the way that that vein plastic um, builds up on the side of a hot mold. You know, the mold is pulling the plastic to the surfaces um, a little bit here, but definitely more so here. So you're actually getting a better effect as well as a better pour. Um, this one right here is just an absolute nightmare and uh, I'll show you why. All right, so here's our cracked up just, I don't even, I don't even know what to say about this. Um, so here's what happens when you have cracks like this, right? Let's, let, let's say you go to rig this bait. Look at this. It's just, ah, uh, look at this. Oh my God, yeah. It's just peeling right apart. Yep. This is, this is what happens when a, when a bait is just poured so sloppily, right? Just 
complete yeah like you don't want your customer getting a bait that does this right that's just that's just not cool not only does it look horrible it is functionally useless right you're gonna get just a few casts out of that it may even split in the nose just rigging it up much less are you gonna get performance out of it or multiple fish like that's not gonna hold up at all so here's one of the ones that we did earlier okay and uh, yeah you know it, it actually looks okay however even this one yeah not bonded very well you know I should not be able to pull that apart that easily and and as you can see it kind of breaks cleanly right it's it's not like I'm pulling it apart and and this top layer is pulling plastic from this layer you know you you can tell ultimately that one wasn't bonded yes this one wouldn't just completely fall apart on you immediately like this one would but you're still getting a worse color like it, it just looks sloppy and it's not going to perform it's not going to perform the way that you want to and just real quick before we leave here's one of the other ones that we poured as the second round trying to do a bad job as you can see really really clean breaks right very clean pores between those colors that's that's how you know it that it wasn't bonded if it was bonded well let's see if we can find the spot yeah so see see how that layer is actually tearing okay i'm actually tearing the plastic right that vein didn't just peel right off cleanly this one has a little bit more of a tear so so the vein actually seemed to um actually bond up with that belly pretty well but as you can see the top did not you know and the top is where you really need a good bond with that bottom layer because you go to rig this in the nose you're going to get splitting of the nose and then the bait is completely useless and of course all of our baits today were poured with the one and only dead on plastics plastisol check them out if you are in need of some good plastisol, if you want to start making your own uh, soft plastics, they also have incredible products in terms of glitters and colors and powders and, and uh, plastisol additives that you'll need. And then uh, these were all Angling AI molds as well. Check out these two companies, the two title sponsors of World's Worst Fishing. Couldn't do it without them. So uh, shout out to two great companies that are doing awesome things for the bait making community. All right, everybody. Well, it's a little bit warmer and we are all finished. So uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this demonstration. You know, we've done a lot of hand pouring on this channel and a lot of swim baits. So some of you may be like, oh, not again. But this was really an in-depth tutorial, really focused on process and understanding temperature so that you can make your best bait. Um, this was not me doing some crazy technique or just a bait blog. You know, this one was really down deep in the pits of getting technical um, and there really is a right way to do this there is a wrong way to do it and then there's something a little bit in between and I think a lot of people are in between they're not pouring just completely cold aluminum molds and you know getting cracks like crazy but you even still do see that even at the um, more commercial hand pouring level so you know this is just kind of meant to show you know the differences in proper temperature pouring versus not proper and what that kind of means in terms of the quality and performance that you're going to get out of that bait you know you want to make the best bait you can and the best color you can that's going to have the best longevity durability and performance that you can and a lot of that starts with good materials you know like i said good molds good plastic but you also have to have your process down and the most important thing is always temperature i have always called hand pouring game of temperatures so anyways shoot me some comments down below let me know how you like this video this was a really in-depth look so i hope some of y'all uh, really took some information from it and um i hope it helps you make better baits like subscribe hit the notification bell we will see y'all in the next one